And we're live! Yay! We did it again. I'm so excited. Welcome to Sew Together Tuesday. I am back again. We have another episode of Sew Together Tuesday. We do it every week here on the Shannon Fabrics Facebook page and on YouTube. I am Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator and I am excited to be here. We are doing a project today that is kind of exciting that uh, it's kind of harkens back to our own childhood and we've all probably had a teddy bear at some point. This is a great, great project to start with. And so uh, if you're starting to work with cuddle or you want to make stuffed animals, this is a good one. So we're going to make that today. Um, I want to welcome you. Uh, if this is your first time, I would love a little like thumbs up. Let us know that you're, you're a newbie here. Uh, we're always excited to have new people sewing with our fabric. So thank you for joining us. And if you have been here the entire last year that we have been doing this, I'm especially grateful. So thank you for being here again. Uh, we want to let you know that if you share this video, we will be giving away a prize at the end. We'll give away a cuddle quilt kit. So you, if you share the video, you'll be entered to win. We'll announce the winner at the end and then we'll send you a kit. Super exciting. I also wanna let you know that if you uh, want to know the pattern, how to get the pattern and all that sort of stuff, you wanna to go to our blog. So there's lots of additional information there, some tips, some tricks, the list of um, more information about what you're gonna need is there. Uh, so I think that's probably all. I always have like this list in my head and then I have to go through and try to remember it all. And I always think I didn't remember it, but I think maybe I did again. I don't know. <laughs> We'll see. Hawk's not being like, you got to tell me that, tell him this. So I think we're good. Uh, so today we're doing the Melly and me buddy bear, which I have, I look like I like making stuffed animals. I have them all over here now. So that's what this guy is. Super cute little bear. He's got just a couple of little appendages that flip around. So his little, his little arms move. He's got these stubby little legs that are adorable and a little applique face. So today we're going to make him out of Lux Cuddle. You can do it out of either one. This pattern is originally written to be made with cotton. So there's going to be some things that we do differently with it because we're making it out of a cuddle fabric and then even more because we're doing it out of a luxe cuddle fabric. Okay, so there's going to be some things we'll talk about throughout it. And um, yeah, we'll talk about how you do the how you do the applique on the cuddle three guy, but also we're working on this one today. So I'm going to stick these guys back up here because they kind of liked hanging out up there. I like how different they look too. Like the there's a big difference in the cuddle versus the luxe cuddle look. And so it kind of makes it fun that you can actually do it whatever way you want. The one that we're doing today, I chose a luxe cuddle. And I should have gotten a fabric name. Now I can't remember what this one is. Um, so this is what we're doing today. Um, I chose this one out of my stash. Oh, it's really turquoisey on there. It's a really pretty blue green. I think it's like a mallardy color. Um, I really like it because it's very much like my childhood bear. So when I was a kid, I had a little stuffed bear that was kind of like this, except without the floppy arms. And um, this was the color it was. So that's what I chose today to, to do this. So we have some Lux Cuddle. So let's get started. If you want the pattern, you need to go to the blog and there's a link there. She was nice enough to give us a coupon code. So so if you want to buy the pattern, I think it was 20% off. Um, check the blog to find out. I think we might have the code here that we can tell you. And uh, okay, hold on, let me, let me see if I can get over here. Uh, okay, so what you're going to need is you're going to need the Buddy Bear pattern. So this is from Melly and Me. She has a whole bunch of patterns and all of her little stuffed animal patterns are, uh, they are made for cotton, but they are totally doable in cuddle as well. So you're going to need the pattern. You're going to need some cuddle or luxe cuddle, whichever way you want to do it. A felt tip marker, a rotary cutter, or the Ulfa blade. I'm going to show you how I use both of them, as well as scissors. You'll want the self-healing uh, cutting mat, obviously, if you are using the rotary cutter or blade. I'm going to use some little scissors as well today, my macro serrated ones, which I like very much. If you have not purchased the micro serrated scissors, I really recommend them. They work very, very well with this fabric or anything that has some stretch or wiggle or move. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is 9014 stretch needle, some polyester thread. We use Metrocene from Mettler. Flower head pins, and I'm minor from Clover today. I love them. I'm going to use a stiletto from By Annie. We use this a lot. It really does work very, very well for this. We're going to use it in a few different places. I'll show you how I like it. Water-soluble stabilizer from Silky Basting Spray, my favorite 505 from Odif. And we're also going to use some fiberfill that is the Royal Silk by Fairfield. And then, you know, we might have to do some hand sewing. So... 
<laughs> Hawk doesn't like the hand sewing. I don't like threading the, the needle. So it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it works. In this one, we could probably machine stitch the edge if we were really sneaky about it. But hand stitching will be fine. So we're going to do that. So make sure that you've got the pattern. The one thing I want to say about the pattern is that when you print it, if you get the PDF version, which I really love because then I can just buy it, print it out and use it right then, which is awesome. But make sure that you are printing it in 100% and not to fit your page. So I think that she's Australian. I'm going to say the wrong country. Um, the patterns are from somewhere else, I think. And so when I, when I printed it just like the regular page, it wanted to print it at the other page size and it shrunk it a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. So make sure that you're printing it at 100%. And that's true regardless of where the patterns are made, that it's really important to print at 100% so you get the accurate sizing because printers will do funny things and print it at weird sizes. Um, we had one of the students, we had Road to California classes last week, and one of them had printed it out, and hers had printed at 50%. And then she wondered why it was having, why she was having trouble. Hi, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great story that she told us about it. And I was like, oh, that's terrible. Um, all right. So make sure that it's printed at 100%. You'll want it. All right. So I've got some of it cut out, some of it taken care of already. We're going to start by cutting things out. I'm going to start with the, I'm going to start with the body. We're going to, um, oh, I'm going to start with the head because that's what I've got here. So uh, we're going to start with the head. I traced it out already. What I want to show you is two different ways of cutting it. So if I were going to cut this with the, Cuddle three, which is what this one I did this one out of, and we'll talk about this later. This I just cut with the rotary cutter. I just cut around it and it was fine. But cuddle three doesn't really make too much of a mess. Lux cuddle will make more of a mess when we cut it. So I traced it, I traced around it already with my pen, and then I'm just gonna use my blade. So I'm gonna show you two different ways of cutting it. All right. So this is my Ulfa blade, the SAC-1 that I like so very, very much. Okay, it's a great little blade and it will cut the fabric really well. So I like to use this for things that are straight lines or slight curves. So I will use that for this piece. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold my fabric nice and taut and I'm just gonna drag it right along here. And what this does is it cuts the backing fabric and leaves most of the fibers on here. So I have much less mess to deal with. So now I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna cut around this curve so the curves are a little bit harder because I can only kind of do it a little bit at a time. And I just hold my finger nice and close. And just make sure you don't come up and grab your finger. Okay, but holding this fabric nice and taut as I come around. Okay, and I'm gonna kind of move it a little bit so I can hold it and be able to pull along it. So I'm not trying to push through the fabric. I'm simply trying to push the um, cut through the backing. So sometimes I'll get these little spots where I didn't quite push hard enough and I'm okay with that. I'll just go back and snip them. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Hold this nice and tight. And I just try to hold it as flat as possible. Okay. I'm going to get this last little bit. So this works pretty well, especially for straight and also for like large sort of curves like this will work. So you can see that what this does is leaves a whole lot of the mess on the fabric. So I've got some loose stuff here that I can sort of just swish off. Okay, if I cut this with a rotary cutter, all of this stuff will be cut. And so then what ends up happening is I have a huge mess. This, it kind of just sticks to it. So even though I'm gonna lose stuff, lose some of the nap here, it's much easier to contain than if I cut it with the rotary. And then I'm just gonna gently pick this guy up and throw it away as well. And by throw it away, you mean put it in the recycling bin. Right, right, I'm gonna save those scraps because that's what I do. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm just tossed it. There wasn't a lot of extra. It wasn't too much. Okay, so I'm going to put that aside. So then the body is what we're going to do next. And I'm going to trace that out. And I just use a Sharpie pen. This is a dark front, but it is not a dark back. So I can absolutely just trace this with the black. If you are doing it with a darker fabric, We've had lots of discussions about this and you can do it with a silver Sharpie, a bronze Sharpie, a chalk pencil, lots of lots of things. Somebody I know, I think Bobby does it with soap. 
if I remember. Somebody did. They did it with like this little soap tongue. So you can do all sorts of things on the dark fabric. The light fabric, I just use a Sharpie and it works totally well. So I've just traced around this. It is 100% flippable. So if it were not, if there was a right and a, you know, right side and a wrong side, then I would make sure that I was doing one side one way and one the other. I already cut the other side out. So we're here. And now I'm just going to cut this guy out. And I'm going to use my little Femore scissors. So that's what I'm using today are these guys. These are the Femore razor edge scissors, which have the nice little uh, micro serrations in here. These are my very well-loved scissors. And I, what I like about them is that they will snip the fabric and then just cut just a little bit at a time. So when I say a little bit, it's really what I mean. And I'm just trying to cut the backing fabric. So as soon as I can start to feel it grab a little bit more of the nap up front, I stop, I reposition, and I'm gonna just keep cutting. Okay, and what this does is it also cuts in the same way as that blade where I'm gonna be able to keep some of the nap on here so that not all of it is cut off and flying around my sewing room. So the one perk of doing it this way is that you don't have so much of a mess. The sort of, the con to it is that you can't see your edges quite as nicely. So if you really struggle with that part of seeing the edge, and in certain situations it's a little more important, using the rotary cutter might be the better way of doing it. In this one, these edges are fine. At least I found them to be. But should you struggle, you can always cut it with a rotary. It would just be a little bit messier. How wide is this, uh, this, this the widest piece? Um, it is eight inches. Jackie seems to think that we might be able to use a 10 inch sweet strip for this project. Oh, we absolutely. That's what this is. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely Sorry. right. That's exactly Sorry. what I did is I took a 10 inch strip. I forgot to even say it. Thanks, Jackie. Um, I took a sweet strip, which are uh, these guys here. Let me just grab one out of the shelf. So these guys, and you can um, get these in packages. And uh, this is one from like the rose water one. I can't remember which collection this is from, but it's a bunch of these blue greens that are really beautiful. So it comes like this. It's 60 inches wide and 10 inches tall. So absolutely worked. Yes. Perfect. Okay. That's what I did. And I was able to have a little bit of extra at the end. So I was hoping that maybe I could get two of them out of it and I couldn't. Um, so you would just have, you know, scrap for more stuffed animals. That's all. It's just a little bit extra for next time. Okay. But you can absolutely do it out of a sweet strip. Yep. And there's so many variations of that. The new ones come in, I think, five packs, which is pretty fun because you get a whole variety of shades of each color. So yeah, eight inches wide by 10 inches tall. That's what it was. So hey, this- I, no I noticed oh. Mettler's thread came through in our comments. Hi, oh, nice. Mettler. Hi, Mettler. Thank you so much for all the thread. I do love them. So this is this is the part where cutting it with the scissors is really important because this little part here, there's no way I could get around that with a blade or a rotary cutter. It's just too, it's too small, too tight of a corner. So using the little scissors is very, very helpful. Okay, so now I've got these. Move that gently. I'm stuck. Oh no. What do you know about sharpening those serrated blades? the scissors um i know that i ha i have some from kai i have larger scissors from kai that are micro serrated and i have sent them to them to sharpen they do so cool. uh, i think that Fomore may be offering sharpening um, but i'm not sure okay so i'm gonna take this and i'm just gonna get rid of some of the mess over here kind of pull it off chuck it and then give it a good shake Okay, give it a good thwack. I'll vacuum it up later. It's what I do. <laughs> we just make a mess, vacuum it up. It's fine. It's fine. All right, so now get my pieces out of the way. All right, so now I've got my head and my body. So we can do it a couple of different ways here. We can we can put the face together and the body together. I mean, like make his face and make his body and then sew them together, or we can do them separately. Uh, I'm going to do them. I'm going to do one piece, then the other piece. But what I want to do first is do the arms and the ears. Okay, so then we'll start doing the applique stuff. So I just want to put the applique off for just a second. Okay, all right. So the first thing we're going to do is the arm. 
And I'm going to show you how I do that. So this is one of those patterns where reading the instructions will really, really help. Um, you can imagine, I probably didn't the first time. And um, it will help a lot. So this is one of those where you're going to um, trace the pattern. And I just made a copy of mine and then covered it in packing tape because that's what I do. Uh, that's how I make my patterns last a little bit longer. This is actually the stitching line. Okay, so this is really important is the, the ear and the arm are both traced around on the stitching line and then you stitch it. We've talked about it before and the reason we do this is because the fabric is sort of wiggly. This is a small piece. It's much, much easier to control as a larger piece. I'm gonna trace this one layer and then fold it in half. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trace around this guy. I guess I could have gotten it a little bit away from the edge, but you know, why not? Okay, so we're gonna trace it. This Remember, this is the stitching line. Then I'm gonna fold this in half. And I'm gonna pin it, and then I'm gonna sew it. I believe I gave myself like an eighth of an inch seam allowance there. Okay, and I'm gonna pin in the middle and on a pin on the outside, and that will help give it some stability as I sew. I won't have to take any of these pins out because they're not over the area that I'm sewing. So I just keep it off the black lines and then I'll be able to sew over the top of that. And that's really why I love these flower head pins is because my walking foot is gonna go right over this and stitch it right down without a problem. I don't have to take anything out. All right, so we're gonna do that. Are you ready to come around and I'm sew ready. with me? Now you're not sewing over those pins, but the walking, the, the but the dual, digital dual feed will feed. Right, them, so it'll just slide right underneath slide it. Right. No got problem. It. So I have it on a straight stitch. I've got my Mettler thread. And I'm just using a white today because we're gonna use white when we do the uh, applique for the face and stuff for the lighter fabrics. We'll use the white thread and it's not gonna show on here at all. So I'm just gonna use it the whole time. Okay, so I've got it on a 2.5. So normally we up the stitch length for cuddle. With stuffed animals, I like to keep it at a 2.5 or a three just because they're gonna get a little bit of extra push. So if your machine can't handle it at 2.5, up it, but do keep it a little bit smaller stitch than you might for other things. Okay, because we want it to be able to, to get stuffed and not be an issue. Okay, so this is where it comes in handy is that if this, if I'd already cut out my seam allowance, I only have this little bit to try to like guide it around and make it go as a knit fabric, it's not gonna wanna do that. But instead I've got this whole hunk here that I'm just gonna be able to manipulate and make it go where I want it to go. Okay, and part of the key is keeping it flat as you come around because it will wanna push up. All right, I'm just gonna keep stitching on that line. And you can see it's just slid right over. This, these pins go right underneath the foot, but as long as they're off that black line, which is my stitching line, I'm not gonna hit them. Okay, so I'm gonna cut the thread. And there we go. We've got it sewn through both sides and now I can take my pins out and cut around it. All right, I'm just gonna take the pins out. All right, and then I'm gonna cut this and I'm gonna cut it literally over the trash can. So, sorry, now you can see I actually did <laughs> just throw it away, sorry. But I'm just gonna do it right over the trash can so that most of my mess just ends up in here because it's gonna be messy now since it is um, just getting all of that nap cut off the edge. And that eighth of an inch seam allowance that you left is totally okay because totally. it's Right, totally fine. So you can see that's a pretty small little seam allowance here. No big deal. I just trim it nice and short so it's a quarter inch or less throughout. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn and shove this so that all of my cuddle dust that's in there is just gonna stay. Okay, now I have very little mess. Look at that. All right, okay. Another arm done. Now, where did I do? I had my clover. Oh, there it is. Hold on. I have to reach. Okay, so this is my other little stiletto that I like a lot that has the little corner, and this works really well for pushing out round bits. So this is another clover stiletto. 
that we have used a few times and I really like it for that. So here are my little arms. I made one earlier. So now we got two arms. So now let's do the ear. The ear is a little bit funky and I will totally admit that because what we have is we have the outer ear and then we have the inner ear. Trying to get the inner ear placed exactly where we want it to be is really hard if we've traced this out first. So what we do is this tricky little thing. We're actually gonna put this down. We're gonna stitch around it and then we'll use that to line up the next part that we uh, outline. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna move some stuff here. And I've got my, I've just got a piece of, uh, this is just interfacing that I'm using. So I've got my little pink earpiece. And I got my 505 spray and I'm just going to spray the back of this just a little bit just to get it to stick. All right. And now I'm going to take this over here and I'm going to put it in place. I want to make sure as I'm doing that, that I've got enough space around it that I can get my whole ear. And then if I folded it there, probably going to work just fine. Okay. So I just kind of want to make sure that I've given myself plenty of room. So this is way more space than I need for my ear, but this works really, really well. So I'm going to pat that down and we're going to go over and stitch this down. Okay. So this, because we're appliquing here, this is a great time if you have an open toe foot to switch it, which I'm going to do. I'm also going to tighten up my digital dual feet real quick. It's a little wobbly in there right now. Okay, there we go. So now I'm going to switch it over to my open toe foot. Okay, and that lets me be able to uh, see what I'm stitching a little bit better than that closed toe. So I'm going to show you something about this. We'll see if it works the way I want it to. Um, so I'm going to use my stiletto to sort of hold this down. One of the things that can happen is it'll sort of catch on the side of this foot. We'll see if it actually does that. Back stitch just a couple. I'm going to come off the end. Okay, so I need to kind of hold this edge down. When we do some applique uh, later, I'm going to show you how to use it with the uh, water-soluble stabilizer. And with the water-soluble stabilizer, I don't have to fight this edge quite as much. Okay, and we're just using a straight stitch to go around this. Uh, we're gonna, and I'll show you some other stitches later. And just keep shifting, rotating, moving, work our way around this. So you could do this with a straight stitch or a zigzag or a blanket stitch, whatever you want to do. We'll talk about stitches in a bit, but I'm just going to use the straight stitch for right now because it's really nice and easy and I feel like it looks fine with this. Okay. So there's my little ear. The inner ear is stuck on there. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use my pattern. You can sort of see the stitches a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my pattern right over the top of it so that it basically matches where my ear is. And now I'm going to trace around it. And this is my stitching line. I'm not going to stitch here because that's the bottom that I have to leave open. But I am going to stitch here. I definitely trace that bottom though and remember not to not to sew on it because that's where I need to cut it. So then flip this over. I'm going to pin it again and do the same thing as we did with the arm. Okay, so I'm going to do the same where I'm going to pin all the way around it. And I'm literally going to pin all the way around it. Um, well, I guess there was a question, would you serge? And I wouldn't serge any of this truthfully. Um, mostly because I don't love serging cuddle, but um, I don't really feel like it would be super helpful for any of it. So um, I'm just going to stitch stitch all of it with the sewing machine. If you are a person who loves your serger and uses it for everything, give it a shot. No harm. Okay. So now I'm just going to stitch all the way around this. Doing the same thing. I kind of just guiding it with my hands. Okay, the thing that's really important is that you pin it because I will tell you from experience doing little samples for this guy, 
I tried to be a little bit faster and not pin it so much and it totally moves on the back because we're doing this um, twisty thing. It wants to catch on the back and move over a little bit and twice I had to unpick things because the back got too big. So it's definitely something to keep in mind just to make sure you pin it. Okay, I'm gonna take the pins out, do the same thing. Come over the trash can, cut this baby out. And like I said, you could you could do this with you know a little blade or something, but honestly, just cutting it out with the scissors just makes it fast. Okay. And then still while I'm over the trash, I'm gonna flip it so that anything extra just comes right off. All right? Stick my hands around and ta-da. Ta Look at that. It's a little ear. It's so cute. It's so cute. All right. So now I've got my, what was that? It was oh, my little screwdriver. screwdriver. Yeah, we don't want to lose it. Okay, so I've got two ears, two arms. I've got my body, my head, and I've got the other piece that's ready to go for later. So I'm going to put the back. I've sewn that together already and my arms and ears over here so we can tackle the applique on the front. All right, so with this one, this comes with a whole lot of little pieces in the, this one, let me bring it around. So in this guy, the one I made with the Lux Cuddle, I did all of the pieces that she includes, including this little patch and the little stitches. I did all of that stuff. And uh, yeah, and the patch on the belly, which is super cute. Okay, so I did all of those. And on the Lux Cuddle, I didn't. And I think I tried to do this little one in here. And what happens is it just sort of got buried in there into the Lux Cuddle and looked weird for lack of a better word. And so I just decided to take it off of the Lux Cuddle one. So we're not going to do these, but I'll talk about them. We'll do it on the other one. Okay. But you can do with or without all of the patches. Okay. You could do it without the belly. Just put the muzzle on there. We're going to do both. I think. Okay. So here's my tummy piece. There was a comment. Um, uh, I wouldn't enjoy cleaning my serger after uh, after cuddle. Yeah. And uh, even when you do use the serger, you usually have the blade down. I do. Right? I use I use it with the blade down. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because I don't want to clean up that mess. Um, yeah. It's. I mean, it's just going to cut all of that off, and I try to avoid cutting all of it off. So I keep the blade down when I'm doing it. So the only reason for me that I use the serger with it is really to get a nice finish on the inside. So if I were doing a, um, a jacket or something, I would do that. We did it, uh, was it last week we did the hood? Did a hooded infinity scarf? No, it was two weeks ago. So whenever we did that one, we, I showed you, you can absolutely serge it. And so for a nicer finish, you can do that. Uh, but otherwise, it, it doesn't help it to not fray because cuddle is never gonna fray because it's a knit fabric. And while you will get the shedding a little bit when you cut it once it's washed and that shedding is gone it won't come back it won't keep shedding all right so you can see here with the cuddle three how little of a mess it actually makes so cuddle three is super super easy so if you're not really if you're at a place where you're still not super comfortable with all of the the shedding and how to deal with it do your do your little bear out of cuddle three and it'll be super duper easy so we're going to put the belly on we can look at the pattern, figure out, okay, so we want the belly to be about there. Sounds good. Okay, so what I can do, there's a couple of ways. I'm generally, I'm not the kind of person who wants to make it perfect. It's just not how I sew. But you can do on Lux Cuddle, you can do this just to show about where you want it. So then I can take it off because I have to take it off to go put the spray on it. So I'll bring this over here. I'll give it a little spritz. And I'll put that belly back on there. Okay, if you don't really care, just whack it on there wherever you want. You can make sure that the nap is going the right way. That's what I was just doing. Okay, because I want my nap to go this way, not this way. Okay, so I want to all go down. It isn't that important though. So if your nap ends up going the other way, it's okay. Don't panic. 
All right, if you get it to this point and you realize your nap is upside down, just pick it up. You can totally take it off and put it back down. So you could fix it at this point if you if you realize that your naps were going the wrong direction. Okay, so on this one, I'm actually gonna take my Sulky Water Soluble Stabilizer. I'm gonna put it on here and I'm gonna pin it on either side. And I'm gonna try to get this in place so that I can stitch around it. All right, so this stuff is actually super, uh, really, really good for using with applique of all sorts. So that's what it looks like in the package. It's the way I get it. And these little things. It is water, water soluble. Do not put water on it when, it when you're using it with the minky fabrics because they will just kind of get mushed into these fibers of the fabric. But it does just tear out super easily, and I'll show you that. So now we're going to go back over and stitch this down. You'll see that it works a little bit easier and I don't have to use the stiletto quite so much to keep it in place because it's just gonna stay in place because the stabilizer is on top of it. So I'm gonna lock my stitch. And I'm just gonna try to grab a space here that I'm gonna keep that an even distance from the raw edge. So the thing about using a straight stitch with uh, applique is trying to keep it so that it's even and um, fairly straight-ish. So it can really be a little bit wobbly and you'll notice it in a straight stitch where you won't in a zigzag, okay? So here, <clears throat> excuse me, I can see some of my blue nap is coming over and I can just push my stiletto under there, put it back into place. I'm gonna lift this so that this is coming in a little bit easier. And now I can keep stitching. So as that blue comes over or if the yellow goes out the other direction, I can actually just use my stiletto to sort of, you know, arrange it, I guess. It was like manicure it, but that's not quite the right word either. Make it look nicer. All right. So now you can see that was a little bit easier. It didn't want to catch on the foot, which is what I really love this water soluble stabilizer for. Is it keeps it all nice and even. Okay. And then I'm just going to tear this off. And with the straight stitches, it's super duper easy. It doesn't get stuck in there at all. I'm going to trim my thread. We're good to go. There's the belly. Look how easy that was. So easy, right? So easy. <laughs> hey, it really is so easy, though. All right, so now we've got the belly done. And at this point, too, we could take and we can come in here. We can fluff things up a little bit. Do, do, do. Okay, I'm gonna hide those stitches just a little bit. You'll always see straight stitches though, just because you can't get, and especially on Cuddle 3, because you can't get the fibers to completely cover it, but you can sort of blend it a little bit so that if your stitches are a little wibbly or uh, yeah, something that you don't like, can always sort of hide it. Forgot to change the color of the thread. You forgot to change the color of the thread. <laughs> Not that I ever, ever do that. <laughs> okay, maybe often I do. Uh, yeah, you can sort of hide it and you can see it kind of blends in a little bit better there. All right, so I'm gonna put that aside and then we're gonna deal with this face. Okay, so on here, it shows you where to put all the placement. I'm not going to do the cheeks or the patch on his, uh, on his face. I did do it on the cuddle three guy. So I'm going to show you this and we're going to do both of these at the same time. Um, well, not literally at the same time, but close. Okay. So these are little bitty pieces. Okay. So once you cut them out, I suggest that you find a little bag or something to put them in because they are, they are little guys. So this is the little patch for his head. I've got the little cheeks on. So let's talk about this applique first before we move on to the next one. So this one, I did it in a couple of different ways. I put, you put the muzzle on. And when I did the muzzle, I did it with, where is the stitch? There it is. I did it with a blanket stitch that is 1.2 long and 2.5 wide. I like it a little bit shorter. I've been playing with it to try to figure out what I like. The 1.2 I like. I might make it a little narrower next time to a two, but that's what 1.2 long and 2.5 wide looks like on a blanket stitch around the muzzle here, okay? So then after the muzzle, then I did the nose, and the nose I used a zigzag stitch that was 1.6 long and 2.5 wide. So that one is the same width as the blanket stitch, but it's a little bit shorter uh, zigzag, and I got that to go all the way around the nose. It works really well. We'll talk a little bit more about something I found out about doing the nose. And then I did the, 
whatever that little line is from the nose and the mouth. And also the zigzag, I did all those at 1.0 long. So it's a, it, even shorter and too wide. So it got narrower. So this is one that you could do a satin stitch if you wanted to. So if you like a satin stitch, I kind of like the more handmade look of the funky little zigzag, but it really just depends on what you, what you like out of it. These are the exact same zigzag and I'll show you how I did, how I did these. Okay. So then we did that and then we did a straight stitch over here on that one. It was the 2.5 long like we did on the others. So you can see how they all look a little bit different. I think the blanket stitch is super cute. The zigzag works really well. So whatever you want to do, um, yeah, pick whichever one you like. It really is at this point about picking the stitch. It's really about the aesthetics and which look best to you. All right. So we're going to put his patch on and I'm going to show you a little trick with putting the patch or any of these um, placements on here. So I've got my pattern and I can see where my patch goes. It goes above the nose and over here a little bit. I, like I said, I don't worry too much about exact placement. It's just not my thing. So I'm going to put this here. And now when I pull this off, I can kind of see where that was. Okay. Can some, of course, see a flat spot. I'll show you another trick is if you hold this down and you swoop around it, one, you get the rest of your cuddle dust off, which is great. And then the other is that I can lift this up and see exactly where it was. Okay, so it makes for very easy placement. So if you get it on there and you want to be able to take it off, put it back on after you glue based it here, then you can. It doesn't work that neatly with the Lux Cuddle, unfortunately. But it's a really great trick with this. Okay. And I'll stick that back on there. All right, so now we've got him on there. I'm going to wait just a second before I stitch because I want to I want to switch the thread. I want to do the little the black stitching, and that's going to do when I do the nose. So we're going to hold on for just a second. We're going to do all the stitching at the same time. Okay, so we've gotten this. So he's on there. We'll stitch with that. I'll leave that there. We'll talk about that. Okay, and now here's his little muzzle. my little excess cuddle dust on. We're going to put this one on. So this one needs to go around oops, around here. I can put this on and I can smash it down and I can try to like flip the nap and it's not really, oops, it's not really going to do me any good at all. So this one you just have to like pick it and then go. Just stick with it. So the one thing I would I would suggest is that when you're trying to keep things even, using your board the line and your board to keep this flat. So then when we put the ears on, we can do the same thing. When I put the muzzle on, I can make sure that it's fairly straight. If I do this and I line it up with my, it's about four inches here at the bottom, about four and a half. Yep. Okay. Then I can actually find the center here and I can put my muzzle in the center. All right. So I'm going to take this over here, give it a little spray and try to put it where I think it should go. So I can totally use my little pattern. I'm like, it's about thumbs width up, maybe from the very bottom. Does that seem right? It's a whole different rule of thumb. Yeah. <laughs> it is like, it's about a thumb, about a thumb. Okay. So I'm going to stick that guy there and then we're going to come over and stitch it down. All right. And we're just going to use the straight stitch again with the lighter thread because this is in the quote unquote, lighter fabrics. Uh, if I wanted to, I could switch this to a medium gray, which I love to use for a lot of things, but I'm just going to switch my thread once today and not for this. Okay. So we're just going to do white and then we'll show you how to uh, hide your thread if you need to. Okay. So I'm going to show you this one. I'm not going to put this water soluble stabilizer in it. You'll see how it behaves different. Okay. So if you have the stabilizer, it works really nicely. I do definitely suggest that you base them down always though. The spray base makes a huge difference. Trying to do this if you have just pinned it in place is really, really difficult. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of swoop the fabric out of the way as I work my way around here so I can see where I'm stitching. Because it's, because it's basted down, it's not going to wiggle on me. It's not going to get any little pleats. If you just pin it, it's going to be much more difficult to do. Okay. Back 
keep circling. Did I come off the edge? I think I might have. I'm having a hard time seeing past the camera today. Okay. Oops. All right. Close enough. I think I did come off just a little. Let's go back and fix it. I say it's close enough, and then I'm like, no, it's really not. It's going to annoy me. So I'm going to go back and fix it. Somebody said last week that it's not really a Sew Together Tuesday unless there's an oopsie and a ta-da. There's my oopsie. <laughs> okay. Okay, we'll cut that again. Oh, All that right. was interesting. Somebody was worried about being able to smell the spray based if they send it off to a customer, if there's a concern oh. about that. Yeah. Um, the OD505 spray doesn't have doesn't any smell. really smell yeah it doesn't smell it's great this is why i love it like there are several brands of uh basting spray that you can buy and odif is the only one that i have found that doesn't have any smell so i prefer it the june taylor one is very good and has minimal smell but the odif is really the one that i prefer because it has zero smell at all like we are in a very uh, uh small studio up here the this filming studio is is maybe 10 feet square <laughs> yeah. tops um, it's a little guy and i can't smell it at all yeah yeah it's very it's very good in that regard and that you just it's not stinky which is awesome okay so now look at that you can't really tell it's even white thread in there so now i've got my little nose and again i can look at my picture and figure out where do i want my nose to be oh, i kind of want it in the center so I think probably there. So this is when I like start putting it down. I'm like, it's not very cute yet. And then I get kind of grumpy that it's not super cute, but you just got to wait. It'll get cuter. Okay. I'm going to spray this again. I think part of the, um, the thing with the 505 with any basting spray really is to not use a ton of it. But also this one doesn't smell. Also, it doesn't, st <clears throat> it doesn't end up sticking to your needle. No, it doesn't stick to the needle. And that's definitely a problem I have heard of with other basting sprays is it will, it will stick to your needle and it'll make your needle gummy. And Schmetz makes a needle. I can't remember what it's made out of. It's a special needle that will actually like not let it get gummy. But if you use the 505 spray, you never have that problem because it just never gets gummy. All right. So now I've got my little nose on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew my nose on and then I'm going to do the mouth. So I'm going to sew the nose on with the white and then we're going to change the thread. Okay. But what I want to do is I want to trace this out and I'm going to use this over it so I know where to do the little nose and mouth. So I'm going to put here for my nose. This is the end of my nose. I just want to make sure I have that. So all I've done is just trace that little bit. Okay, the nose I'm going to stitch on with a straight stitch all the way around, and then I'm going to come back and do this zigzag. So I just want to know placement. That's what that little, the bottom part of the nose is for. So I can make sure and get this placed correctly. Now, if you have the, like the embroidery kind of tape, you can use that on here and tape it on. I'm going to pin it. Just pin my water-soluble stabilizer in place. And I'm going to use this while I'm doing both the nose and the mouth. So this is something that I used to really struggle with was like trying to get placement. And then I figured this little trick out and this has been kind of a game changer for me and being able to get things where I want them to be. Okay, one of the things with the water soluble stabilizer too is to make sure that you don't really stretch it, but keep it taut because it'll want to curl up just a little bit. All right, so now we're gonna take this, I'm gonna stitch all the way around this, and then we'll stitch down, but we're gonna change thread in between. Don't let me forget. I, I shan't. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Sometimes I get really excited and I totally forget. One of the other things that I learned doing this nose, because I've done this a few times now, is that you wanna start down here, stitch around and come back. On one of them, let me see if I can see it on. One of them, what I did, it's not too bad, but you can see my little funky stitches here. I started here and then went around and came back, which was not a good idea. And it ended up pointier over here. You can't really see it so much on camera, but it was very frustrating for me. And I had it happen on another one. So if I come down here, if I start here and it starts off kind of a point and comes back to a point, that little 
end of where it's really hard to get a, it's hard to make it end on a curve. If I end on a, on a point, it's much, much better. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do here. And I'm going to, let's do the little zigzag because I do like the zigzag on the nose. Oh no, now I can't remember what it was that I did. Okay. Find my little paper, hold on. Okay, we're gonna do two and a half wide. I wrote it down so I can oh, do it right again. On. Coming over here, I wanna, wanna okay. watch. So I did, I did the zigzag stitch. Yep. Okay, and then I did two and a half wide and 1.6 long. All right, so that's what I'm gonna use as I zigzag around this guy. So what I want is when that zigzag comes down that it's gonna come right off of my fabric. And I'm not gonna backstitch here because I'm gonna come back around with it. But I do wanna make sure that it's coming off. So I like to pivot when I'm in here so that then I can get it to come off here. And I'm gonna pivot. And some of this has to be, you know, a little bit slow going and it's okay. Okay. I'm going to get to a straighter part and I can turn this whole thing and go that way. Okay, so getting it to go around this nice tight corner get back in, is a little more fidgety. And I will say that going around those little cheeks, super fidgety. So it might be something that you want to do by hand if you have a harder time doing it. It was definitely doable, um, but it took some hand cranking around the little cheeks. All right, so now I've got that done. I've got his little nose all plastered on there. Now I'm gonna change my thread and we're, we'll change the stitch and then we'll do his little mouth. All right, so change it to my black thread. Also more polyester, okay? We've talked about it before, but good reminder is polyester is very important. I use Mettler for just about everything. And um, I really like it because it's, uh, one, it's a good thread, but also you really need it for uh, the strength of it. So when you're working with a knit fabric, you want a, oops, I totally missed it. You want a polyester thread so that it will have the strength. Oh, I can't see anything. You need other reading glasses, I guess. Did I get it that time? No. Nope. Hey guys, sorry. I will get this fixed someday. I may put the camera down and make Hawk thread it. Oh, hold on. I can't. I really can't. There we go. A little extra light. The dark thread on the, oh, the on the little belt back there. It's so hard to see. <laughs> And I'm trying to thread it from the side. So maybe we can move the camera over and I can see the thread. Okay. The needle hole better. Sorry, guys. You'll get a bad view for a second, but I can't see the eye of the needle. There we go. That out. Okay. All right. There we go. And, of course, you know how it likes to do this little jumpy thing through there. Ugh, I don't know how it manages that every time. It really does. All right. So I'm going to stick my... A uh, little piece back in here. I want this to butt up to my uh, my nose. So I'm putting my needle down just so I have it in position. And now I can change my uh, zigzag. And so that one, I made it a little narrower. So you can make it even narrower. I did another one at 1.8 and I liked that too. And then we're going to make this smaller at 1.0. So you can see here the stitch style, and I've just made it a really tight zigzag. You can make it smaller and smaller and smaller. You can also switch it so that you just have a, uh, a satin stitch, and you can absolutely do that as well. All right, so now I'm going to lock my stitch. Make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And then I'm going to stitch down here. And I'm actually going to stitch over it twice because I like the way that looks. So you can do it any way that you want to, but that is one way of doing it. Okay, so then when I switch, I'm going to put my needle down. I'm going to hand crank it up and put it in the right position again. Because if I just start coming back up, I'm going to have a zigzag that is twice as wide as what I needed. All right. So I'm going to just zigzag back up, come back to where I was, do a little lock stitch. 
and cut my thread. And then I'm going to come back and do the same thing for the mouth. My incredibly long tail there. All right. Do the same thing. Do a little lock stitch. Oh, no. I have to do it all over again. So we tried to do a lock stitch, but nah. I'm going to do the threading game one more time. All right. We're going to look at something else. Yeah. <laughs> so I can actually get in there. Thank you. I appreciate it. Get my face a little closer to the needle. It's very hard to do it from the side. Okay. There oh, we go. I got something fun. We'll show them. Check that out. <laughs> Look at that. It's so together Tuesday. But Joe. Oops, sorry. I'm throwing my ruler on the floor. Okay. Okay. You ready? Right, coming back. Okay. We're right, coming we back. Got it. All right. We got it. We're in position. All right. Now I'm going to do a little lock stitch. <laughs> no performance anxiety. No. Also, I could see it much better because I could get my face right next to the needle. It was yeah. great. So this, I just shrunk it down just a little bit. So I chunk, I just shredded it, shredded it. I shrunk it to a 0.8 length. We'll see how that is. Okay. Mostly because I just want to see what it does. Because I'm always about experimenting. Let's try it. Oh yeah, everybody, you're doing it already. Ah. But leave the leave the the how to thread a needle tips in the comments. We'll get to them. Awesome. <laughs> the paper behind the needle that I know. Can uh, you imagine me trying to get a paper back here while you're still holding the camera there? I don't even know. Yeah, any tips besides you know take your machine in and get the needle threader fixed? <laughs> I think I don't think I have an excuse anymore. I think it has to get done. All right. So now I've got my Mouth stitched, my nose stitched. All right. I'm just moving. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. I'm just, I just move it. There we go. Okay. There we go. So now I can take this off. So this is the one thing about the water soluble stabilizer is it will want to stick in the little zigzags so that you'll end up having to take your, your stiletto. This one looks like it came out pretty good, but you can take your stiletto kind of grab those guys you have a little pair of tweezers it work really well to do that so then you can come over here fluff your stitches a little bit so even though I use the white thread in there with the gray we're going to be able to hide that just fine okay all right there we go the water soluble stabilizer is stuck behind there and that is totally fine I'm going to leave it I'm going to trim that thread all right, so now we've got a little mouth. Look at that. How cute is that? All right, so then I want to show you with this guy what I did. Okay, so with this, I need to get another piece of stabilizer. And we'll stitch over this just a few times because this actually is a bunch of stitches. Uh, we're not going to do all of them today, but I just wanted to show you how it worked. So I'm going to take my stabilizer and I'm going to do the same thing because I really like the way that this little uh, patch is sewn on. I think it's super cute. And so, I... Sorry, wrong side. How could you tell? Well, because, <laughs> yes, how could I tell is because the, um, the back side of it is rough. I gotcha. just drew it on the wrong side. So, okay, so I'm going to take that and I'm going to stick this over where I want to sew it. And I'm going to pin it down in a few places <laughs> with the stabilizer behind it. Everybody, buddy, wants to know where to get the mugs. They're coming. We'll, <laughs> we'll, let, you, we'll let you know. That's a prototype. Yeah, just to see if it would work. Okay. Somebody asked about anchoring the nose. Let me answer that question really quick. It said, with a little dot for the nose, could you just anchor it down in three spots? You could, but it's big enough that you would have you would have some space under it. Um, I feel like with this, you could probably anchor it in a few places, but honestly, just sew it all down, it's fine. Um, okay, so I've got some tearaway stabilizer behind it, just give it a little bit of extra oomph when I'm doing all of this, and then we're gonna stitch this. So what I did, let's see if we can get that light to work better. So it's in our place a little better. Okay, is so if I can remember, I did it in this stitch. So I did it in the, triple stretch stitch is what I did, which it probably doesn't need to be in a stretch, but there are some, this is what I just used. I have another one on my Bernina 
that is a stitch that sort of looks like um, embroidery, like hand embroidery, like sashiko. And so if you have one of those machines, that'd be a great thing. This would also be a place that you could totally um, hand stitch it as well if you wanted to. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. Lock my stitch. I should have changed my bobbin thread because it's black. I mean, it's white. So it's showing through just a little bit. Okay, so now I'm gonna do this one twice. Why is my bobbin stitch pulling up so much? My bobbin thread should not be. I'm gonna, oh no, you guys, I'm gonna re-thread. Okay. <laughs> you should not be able to see your bobbin. Bobbin should be hiding back there just fine, and it is not. So something tells me it needs to be, oh no, re-threaded. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to, while I'm here, I'm just going to pop this out and put in, I have a blue, a blue bobbin. So even though that's not what I am using up top, it's dark. And so you won't be able to see it. So even if it's, uh, even if it pulls up just the tiniest little bit now, you won't see it. So let's try it on another one. Okay. And this one, I'm just going to do one stitch or one um, length of it. Okay, and then we'll do a little lock. So basically all I'm gonna do is just work my way, see how much better that looks now. Can we get a little closer? Yeah, look at how much better that is. Okay. Yeah, much, much better. All right, we fix that. So then the same, I'm gonna do the same thing here, just so we can see a few of these, okay? So while this is a stretch stitch, it doesn't need to be a stretch stitch. I'm just trying to get a thicker line down here. You could do the same thing with a very narrow zigzag or um, with, like I said, like a sashiko stitch or even just going back and forth with it on a straight stitch. A few different times would be, would be fine too. Lock my stitch. Take this out. Okay, so I'm not going to stitch all the way around it. That would be how I did it the whole way around. Okay, and just stitching right over it. Let me just pull this up and clip my threads. And you can see how cute that little stitching is on there. Kind of adorable. All right, so there we go. So that's when your bobbin shows. Not good. Hide that one. So now I can feel the stitches are weird too. That's so interesting. Yeah, tension was super off right there. But this is exactly what it's supposed to look like. What, what's the super back look cute. Like? A lot of messy thread because I didn't hold my tails. Okay. <laughs> but we can, you know, we can cut that. Look, ta da. Okay, there we go. Right? So that's what we want is it to be this cute little little X's. So this edge is actually loose, but it's basted down. So it's going to stick right now. And even on the other ones, it didn't come up because it's stitched down enough. So this will totally hold it in place as you go. And then you can, um, what I would do is I would trim this short, even though this is a tear or yeah, it is a tear away. I would just trim it short and not actually try to tear it out. Just leave it close to the stitches. Give it a little bit of extra. Oomph. Okay. So that's a good way of doing the applique for it. If you want to do this for the belly and the patch up here on its head if you're going to do those. All right. So now let's put this guy together. I think we're just about there. Uh, should we sew the eyes on first? I guess we could. Let's do that. Got my needle and I've got some little buttons to use. So these are little half inch buttons that I was going to use. 
Oh, see how much easier it is to thread when I can see the eyeball right in front of the eyeball. It's really just an eye. It's just the eye of the needle, not the eyeball of the needle. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know, as you're learning your sewing word talk. Cop, copy okay. that. It's, it's, not a, it's not a jersey needle with a, with the ball on the end of it. Right. <laughs> okay. That's a ballpoint. This is a... <laughs> so many words, so many words. So these are little half inch uh, buttons that I have and you can just stick them wherever you want. So I'm going to look at here and be like, oh, it's kind of just straight over. It looks like maybe a finger's width from each. Pretty cute. Let me see if I can get this lined up. Rule of finger doesn't have the same ring to it. It really doesn't. So, so this is a place where I was like, oh wait, I think it's crooked and it is. So I lined my cut edge up with my board here so that I can get his eyes actually parallel along here. Okay, and I want them to be close. Close to where they're supposed to be. So I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to do a couple little stitches. If I were doing this for a kid, I would stitch a bunch so that they can't eat them off because kids like to do that. Let me just do a couple. Uh, one of the things I was going to tell you about sewing the buttons on, there is buttonhole thread that we've talked about before that is extra long. You can also use cotton quilting thread, which is extra strong for hand quilting to sew these sort of things on because it'll hold much better. On that note, somebody uh, mentioned earlier, I saw it go by and mm -hmm. I didn't get a chance to mention it in time, um, was that they use embroidery thread on the bobbin when they're doing applique. Oh. Is that, is, is embroidery thread also polyester? Mm-hmm. Got yep. it. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Um, yeah, and you could do that. Uh, it's usually a thinner. It's usually a 60 weight, so it's a little bit thinner bobbin thread. I think that was Rin. Yep. She knows what she's talking about. She does this all the time. Okay. So I'm just doing this super simple. We're going to go over and stick the other eye on. Get that in place. Let's move that. Oh, come on, lay down. All right. We want this to be flat along here. And then I'm going to get the eye. So it's basically... I think that's right. Is that look right if you come down the top? It's pretty cute, right? I think it's pretty cute. I think, uh, I think the, a little more to the inside. Yep, there. Like that? That was right? Yep. Okay. I'm going to try to stab through and find the hole and not my finger. Did pretty good that time. Did pretty well. All right. So I'm just doing the little X in his eyes. So we can kind of go back and forth. So I'll show you. So the hand, the the note about the hand uh, quilting thread is only for this. You wouldn't use that in, right in the machine to applique it. No, no, you would yeah. just use it to sew on buttons because it's extra strong. Uh, it's extra thick, and so it really makes them um, a nice. So another thing you can do to strengthen your buttons is to add that little, like make a shank out of your thread, and then I'm gonna come back. To the back except it just stabbed through the front again that's pretty funny all right and we'll bring it to the back give it a good tug some little lux cuddle fuzzes in there you can also i know i've seen a few people who have like bought uh embroidery designs for eyes and mouths and that sort of thing and if you had those you could actually just you know embroider a face on which would be great too. for little littles mm -hmm. like infant, infants, yeah right? exactly because then there's nothing that they could chew off eat potentially swallow. All right. Look at that. He's getting there. Super cute. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put his, get my pieces put away because these guys are little and I've been trying really hard not to lose any of them. <laughs> All right. So now we've got his arms and I've got his ears and I need to put those on and I'm going to adhere those here. I'm going to sew them on. The ears and the arms, I'm going to put just a little bit of stuffing. So let me reach behind you and grab the royal silk. And then I'll show you guys this. So this is uh, it's my big, big bag of royal silk. 
okay, from uh, the folks who make polyfill. So it's just a version of polyfill, but it's a much nicer version. I really like it. It's super, super soft. You can see it's just yummy. So that's what we're going to use in this. It makes it uh, just much more huggable, in my opinion. Okay, I'm going to get some. And I'm just going to put, don't move it too far. Okay, I'm just going to put a little bit in his arms. We did the uh, the Kimber Bear on Saturday for Road to California, and we're going to pack this sort of the same way, stuff it, the sort of the same way that we do that, where we kind of just stuff mostly the hands and leave the top of it, his arms, floppy. Okay, so I'm just going to push that down there. See how much more I want, might want. Get that down there. And then I'm going to take my little stiletto here and make sure that I sort of fluffed up the edges. So for me, I kind of like to do this as I go rather than waiting until the very end. So that one's stuffed. And now I'm going to do this one about the same amount. So part of that trick is if you kind of do the same, like get two balls and then use the same amount, that works pretty well too. Okay, and I'm just going to push this in. One of the things that I really like about this royal silk is it just doesn't clump. So I can do this where I just keep shoving it in and it's not going to be a big old clumpiness in there. And I really appreciate that. Having grown up with the uh, the clumpy kind. I made a lot of pillows when I was a kid that way. Mm. They're just lumpy. Yeah. So I'm <laughs> a big fan of this royal silk. And you can get it at a lot of different quilt shops. And Yeah. There we go. A little squeeze. I think he needs just the tiniest bit more. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fluff up those sides. So you can see this where the stitches or where the nap gets caught into the seam. And I can just take my stiletto and I just kind of run it along there. And just like magic, it goes away. And all of a sudden, it doesn't show. And I just kind of run it along here. I know that you can, you can kind of come in here and some people will take this and like come in underneath and pull it out. But I literally just scratch it and it comes out just fine. Sometimes I can get finicky, um, finicky. I'll get real picky about it, but most time if I just do a little back and forth, it pops out. It's good. Look at that. It's like magic. All right. So now his arms, nice and fluffy, stuffed, ready to go. And now his arms get attached to his front. It was funny because one time I tried to I tried it, and you know this is in my my lessons on reading reading the instructions. Um, and I really I will learn someday. So the top of his arm one is bent this way. Okay. So we're going to put it so that his arm sort of goes out toward his edge. One of them I decided I was going to sew it in here. That's not how it goes. Okay, it goes in this top seam. So that's a little bit different. We're going to sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance. So we want just a little bit here. And I'm going to pin it in place. So this is one place that if you were struggling with this edge just a little bit, you could absolutely zigzag it or surge it and get that top edge nice and neat. Before you even attach it. Before you attach it. Right. Got exactly. Because then you could see this. Because you can see here, I can't see diddly. It's just hidden now. So I'm going to sew that and hope for the best. And then we may have to, you know, fix it. So that's one way of fixing that is um, just being able to zigzag this down. And uh, you'll be able to see that edge better or, like I said, surging it. So again, I'm going to make sure that it, when it fits along the top here, that it's going out toward the sides of the body. And then I'm just going to pin this in place so it has, it's not, it's more than a quarter of an inch, but not a whole lot more because I want those arms to sit kind of right near the edge there. I also don't want to catch them in there, so I'm going to pin it just a little bit away. All right, so now I'm going to take this to the machine and I'm going to sew it. I'm actually going to sew this from this side because I want to see that cut edge better and make sure that I'm catching it or being able to get a quarter inch seam allowance there. 
All right. So I'm going to move my, change my foot back to a closed toe. All right, and I'm going to do that because it's going to hold this seam a lot flatter for me. So already I can see as I get this down here that my side here is further down than I want it to be. So I'm just going to do a little bit of shimmying. And then I really want to do some vacuuming. But I'm not going to do that right now. Okay. So now I will stick that in. And the this is my quarter inch line here, the second red line. That's my quarter inch, but I'm going to move it over just the tiniest bit so that when I'm catching it, if I do it the other way when I come back, if it, it won't show. Come on. Hold on. There we go. Get it moving with the stiletto a little. Oh, I know why. I was like, why is it not moving very fast? It's still in a stretch stitch. There we go. All oh, right. now it's cruising. Now it's cruising. Now it's like, now we're not trying to stitch in the same place three times. Got it. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here and just make sure that this is caught up. So this is the stiletto. Like, this is what I can do is I can move this guy. I can hold it. And now I can stab through all three layers and make sure that they all get caught. All right. So then I can come over here and give his little arms a tug. See if they got caught. They did indeed, which is great. I don't see any parts that are flipping off. So that's wonderful. And then we're going to do his little ears the same way. Okay, so his ears are these cute little guys. And I'm just going to put a tiny bit of fluff because they're Lux Cuddle they, and they have the seam allowance in here and stuff. They're already kind of fluffy. And I don't want to add too much bulk to it, but just a little bit of cuteness. Right. Oh, sorry, I missed another question up there. I wish it would alert me. It says, do you have the tearaway stabilizer only under the patch because it's so small? And yeah, it was because I just wanted to. I just wanted the stabilizer under the part I was sewing. For me, it, uh, it's not like using the embroidery machine where you're really stabilizing the entire piece while you're stitching. This, I was just stabilizing the fa fabric underneath the patch. I would do that underneath the um, the other patch too. You could do it under the belly. I didn't have too much trouble, but if you were using a, um, like a dimple, especially with all of its stretchiness, then you would definitely want to use it under more. All right, I'm going to put that there. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing where I can lay this guy out, line him up against a line on my board. That green off, and now we can figure out where we want his ears to go. So you have all sorts of options on where his ears could go. What do you think, Hawk? Follow the pattern. And no, there's no marking. There's <laughs> oh, no marking. No. Look, all we're right, gonna just figure it, it out. Right. I think that's pretty cute. That seems pretty cute. Okay. Follow the pattern, he says. <laughs> like I do that. Like I do that. You have known me long enough. I don't follow patterns. I sort of do. I just make up my own thing as I go. You know figure it out for me. And most of the time, because I'm playing with patterns that weren't really made for this fabric, but I want them to be for this. I want them to work for cuddles. So I make them. All right. So I'm going to pin this here. And then one of the things that I have found that works really well for making sure they're in the same place is to do this. And then I can pin on one edge and the other. Okay, so now this is, should be the same uh, spot. Symmetrical marks. Symmetrical, exactly, because me just eyeballing it isn't really going to work. So the other thing I can tell you is make sure that when you put your ear on that the pink is facing the right direction. And we're going to get this, put that there. I'm going to get that as close to the edge as possible. So one of the things about this is that the head is curved and the ears are flat. So they're not going to want to match perfectly. So we're just going to give it a shot and hope for the best. All right. We may end up having to do, you know, some of that oops sewing where I go back and I fix it. We'll see. And again, I'm going to sew it from the back just so I can see a little bit better. So 
So I'm going to take my pins out because I want to control the fabric a little bit more with my stiletto than I can with the pins in there. Okay, let's see if that worked. Oh, I missed a part. See, it happens. Okay. And better to find it now than later. if that caught it. Yes. All right. So then let's go over here and try the same thing. Caught that one. All right. Okay. So now these go together so uh, now we've got i like them folded down <laughs> they're, cute that way too. they're pretty cute so now we're going to sew these two together so then we've got our front and back all right so let me grab my pins again oops all right i'm going to try to match these edges so this is what i was when i was talking earlier about cutting it with the rotary cutter if you cut it with the rotary cutter all of this fluff will be gone and that makes it easier to see the edges. It also means it's messier, but it's really just kind of a, um, a matter of personal taste on which we'd rather deal with. I'd rather not deal with the mess right now, so I will deal with the fluff as I, as I sew. So I'm just gonna pin this carefully, and then I'm gonna stitch this, and then probably go back and stitch it again, because who knows if I'll have caught it all. I'm gonna take a little bit bigger seam allowance. It's supposed to be a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna take just a tiny bit more just to make sure that it's all caught. Let's go back and do that again. And we'll do that with a straight stitch. So I'm gonna put that in. Make sure that this is all nice and flat out here. And this is quite a, it's not a ton of bulk, but it's enough bulk that your machine may not love it. So be gentle with it and make sure that you don't sew over your pins. Okay, so I'll put my needle down and take that pin out and then back, back stitch to the edge and then go forward again. All right, and if I do that, it tends to uh, sew a little bit better than if I start before the edge and try to catch it all. It tends to wanna get um, just caught up on all of that thickness. Look at that. Okay, I didn't tell you guys, but I did the yellow be belly because the bear that I had when I was a kid had a yellow belly. <laughs> I kind of fluff it. So this is totally the color, and then he had a big yellow belly. His was bigger. Um, it's also not much bigger than this, though. That dovetails um, nicely into a uh, conversation uh, that they were having over here in the comments about mm -hmm. how the first one you always make is you yes <laughs> it's the keeper it's the keeper it's for you it's totally true so i've already made the back and we're just going to go ahead and pin these together and i'm going to make sure that the side seams match so one of the things and i didn't do it this time again and i'm going to have the same issue that i have before is that the front of the head has bulk on it because of the ears that are on there. So getting it to match perfectly is a little bit of a challenge. So if I were to think ahead again, which I've thought about every time I get to this point, is that I would mark the center of the head on both pieces before I start sewing anything onto it. Mm. So there's my inside tip on what I would do if I thought a bit about it before I get so excited to sew stuff. <laughs> so what I learned was that I should do that. What I do is get excited and sew things. So I don't stop and do it, but I would do that just because it's a little bit, um, the first couple of times I had a little bit of a can challenge. You, can you mark it on the, the pattern right now with a Sharpie? Oh, see, look how smart you are so that I remember it next time. There we go. Right. Ta-da. <laughs> There's your your uh, your tip for the day. Mark your patterns before and then transfer those markings. 
So this is a great pattern, like I said, for if you are just starting out with making stuffies, you want to make a really quick one. You can see this doesn't take too long at all. This is a great one too because you could customize it in all sorts of ways. So if you have an embroidery machine, you could absolutely do some embroidery on his belly. You could embroider his face. You could add the patches, not add the patches. It'd be super cute to use the little patch. You could do like, or even his belly if you were going to do a matching blanket. You could use the fabric that you use for the blanket, like for his belly, like if you did, say, a self-binding blanket. You could use the Lux Cuddle for the back of the fabric, and then whatever you use on the center, use that for his belly. And it would be like this little coordinating mm -hmm. gift package. Super cute. Okay, so you can do all sorts of things with this. And I like it for that because it really is um, simple enough. If you had a little one to sew with, too, this is one I think that they could tackle. So there's his head all sewn. And now we're going to go down the side. I'm going to leave a hole in the side here. So I'm going to do my little thing where I put two pins. And then I'm going to leave about three fingers width so that I can then turn it. All right, so this is the other part is because now you've got, you've got bulk in here from his little arms. So getting these to match up is important too. Okay, so finding, finding some places to match and then pinning in between. We we'll do this when we're doing the cuddle blankets too. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll pin an end and an end and then the middle and then go in between. And that's sort of what we're doing here is finding these places where it needs to match and then pinning in between. And that will help sort of ease it out as we're going. So it can't get too far too far out of place. We are using a smaller seam allowance and a lot of times I like to use a half inch seam allowance. If you are uncomfortable using a quarter inch, you can absolutely just add to it. So when you cut out your pattern before you cut it out, just draw another quarter inch to it and, uh, and then you'll have a half inch seam allowance. And honestly, I don't know of any place, maybe this part down here, you mm -hmm. would wanna make sure that that was trimmed shorter. But otherwise, I think it would work totally fine. Make sure those feet corners, is that what they're... Mm -hmm. <laughs> like a strange little thing. But yeah, that spot is... The heels. The heels. Okay, making sure that those are those are know, matching for the most part. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> All right, and then I'm going to pin in between here. So the important part when I'm doing this... Oh, look at that. I used all my pins. Wow. Uh, is that right here, I want to make sure that this is even so that when I when it turns uh, that it will it will match up. I can see there's a little bit of extra here and I'm not sure why these things happen. So I'm going to make sure that the extra is in here that this eases out rather than it trying to ease out in the gape. Um, that you have here. So we don't want to have that like big gaping hole and have that like one side is longer and one side is shorter. We don't want that. Okay. All right. Bonk. Yeah. Move the light out of the way. Get it down here where you can see better. Okay. So I'm going to start here and I am not going to, but you're going to help me remember when I come back to do the little L thing because doing the L thing right now is very hard and I'll show it uh, when we're done. Got it. So, but you did start where the double pin was. I started at the double pin and I'm just going to work my way around. So this is when I can get my little stiletto and kind of ease it in a little and I just feed it in. Okay. And then I get here and this isn't quite a sharp turn, but it's not really a round turn either. So I'm going to lift and turn now. So I get kind of a corner, but it's a rounded corner. I'm going to do the same thing here. Let Watch it turn just a little. Off. Oh, thank you. Yep. I just uh, remembered that you're barefoot. Yep. Because that's the way I like to sew. <laughs> okay. And then I'm just going to work my way around this edge really nice and slow. I can't see my edge at all under there because my U shape is under there somewhere. I'm going to make sure my pin moves so I don't sew over it. And I'm just going to sort of... Yeah, free form sew here until I get to a point where I think I might be coming around. All right, and then we're gonna come around. Sorry, my little doesn't want to get past the digital dual feet very well. 
Okay, there we go. Come around that corner. So anywhere that I have, like, that it struggles just a little bit, I'll probably come back and I'll check it out anyway. But that might be a place that I have to come back and fix. It's one thing that I've learned with stuffed animals is to not actually worry too much if I catch it all on the first try. I'm trying to catch as much as I can if I catch the edges. Coming back and fixing it is so much easier than trying really hard to catch it all the first time. Okay, so I'm going to try to get these um, to nest right here just so that it's not so thick at this intersection. And I'm going to turn. Ouch. The pin. Come on. I see it. Okay. You, apparently, <laughs> your stiletto is now magnetic. It's now magnetized. <laughs> which would work in some certain circumstances right now. I just like to let go. Okay. So now I'm going to move that out of the way. The arms want to kind of bulk up underneath my, my walking foot there, the digital dual feed. Okay. Try to hold this so that it's out a little bit flatter. doesn't get a pleat in there because that's where it'll want to pleat up on me. So I would always sew it from the ear side up. So try to do it that way because then you can see if it gets weird. Where's the gap? So it's back over here. I missed it. Sorry. That's okay. We just haven't worked our way all the way around yet. So here, I want to make sure that I, I'm catching the ears and I can see that if I sew them from this side. If that's on the other side, I could very well miss it. And I want to make sure that I'm catching that seam allowance or the, that seam in the seam allowance for the top. All right. I'm going to come all the way. Okay, now I need tips on how to get the magnetic off of my stiletto. Okay, so now this was the beginning. Goodness gracious. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it like this, and I'm going to just stitch off, and then stitch forward, and then stitch off. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing over here. So when I do this, make sure it catches, and it did. I'm doing this so that it will help turn in my seam allowance when I flip this. And I'll show you that when I get done. So basically on this side, I know I caught everything because this is the side I'm looking at. So let's see how the other side is. All right, so I got a little bit bigger seam allowance. I caught that. It's pretty small, but I caught it. Here's pretty small. I think I might go over that just because I feel like that's a spot that could get into some trouble. Otherwise, it's all good. Okay, I'm just going to go over that little spot right there. And that's it. That was the last the last little bit. So I'm going to lock my, lock my stitch and then I'm going to come around here and just take a little bit wider seam allowance just because it got real small in that at the intersection there of all those seams. I feel like that's a stress point that I don't really want to try to fix later. So I'm not going to. I'm just going to fix it right now. All right. Okay. Are we ready to see if this hole was a big enough hole? Yep. <laughs> so right about now, I think some people would like to know if you're clipping seams at all. So I am going to clip this one here. <laughs> yep. Right. So I am going to clip here. So it can curve a little bit there. Because otherwise, this is the only sort of, and I don't really care that this is not a beautiful U, it's going to be just fine. Okay, these are going to turn out just fine. I am 99% sure. Okay, I've really never had any issue with them being weird. This one, I'm going to clip this here so it comes in at the neck just a little. So, what I have found is that when they are the this way curve, they need to be clipped more than if they come out. This can all fold in on top of each other. This cannot stretch any more than it does. It will just pucker. So we'll give that a shot. All right. See if we can get some, I think some arms out first might be good. We'll see if my, my stitching will hold. <laughs> come on, little arm. There's his other arm. All right. Now we'll work him out. Try not to tug on those arms too much, but rather on the actual body parts, just because I know I stitched it well, but the last thing I want to do is pull his arms out. 
<laughs> as he's uh, as he's coming through here. Okay. And definitely it's uh, interesting because if you do these, like the Lux will be a little bit, I don't know, more to turn than the Cuddle 3 because it does have a longer nap. It's thicker, thicker fabric. Get that out. There we go. This is definitely the roadkill stage, isn't it? <laughs> it's really, it's not like it's so cute right this second. I'm like, come on, guy, you can do it. I believe in you. Every time, All right. every time we, we get to this stage, I think it's a flat Stanley. So. Yeah. <laughs> and then we turn it inside out and it's beautiful. All right. There we go. Get that all turned. His head's up there somewhere. There it is. Yeah, look at that. So adorable. Okay, so now I'm going to take this guy and find the hole there it is and i'm just going to take this and i'm going to push so what i'm doing is i'm taking this round part here and pushing this around okay so i really like this tool for this because it doesn't have a point some of the point turners actually just come to a point and i still feel like that's i've caught it too many times on things so this i really like for turning these uh, sort of rounded edges and i get to smooth it out a little bit if i can find the hole there Okay, there we go. Okay, and I just hold it, push it out. You can see it just kind of pop out there. And it will get these edges all pushed out nice and neat. Okay, there we go. And then I can come along here. I'm just going to fluff these real quick as we go. And you can see what a difference that makes. So there it gets all stuck in. Just do a little bit of scritch scratchy. And it's beautiful. So this is the the bottom part where I had to clip it so it would turn nicely. Mm -hmm. And you can see it turned very well. And even though it wasn't a perfect U shape, it's just fine. Okay, the Lux Cuddle, I will say the Lux Cuddle for stuffed animals is kind of my favorite just because it does hide so many little goofs that the, the Cuddle 3 will show a lot of things if, if things aren't perfectly straight or uh, perfectly curved there. It'll show a lot more. So you just kind of have to yeah, pick your battle, I guess. And I can feel that this is bulkier in here because the seam, I didn't clip it, but you can see that it actually turns just fine. It's nice and smooth. Doesn't give me any weird lumps. As if you were doing this with cotton, you would need to be very careful about doing the clip so that it would turn smoothly. But Cuddle is beautiful in this way that it just is super, super easy. All right. Okay. There around the side of his head, all the way around, and then we'll stuff him and sew him up. All right. all right, there we go. Looks like we're just about done. Let me get my stuffing. Look at that. He is kind of a fat, flat Stanley now, though. Look at him. He's a flat buddy. Cut my thread. All right, and then let me give him a little stuff. So I'm going to stuff his, uh, his head and feet first and then stuff the body. That's the easiest way of doing that. So I'm going to stuff a bunch in here and then push it up into his head is what I'll do. Okay, so now I can push it up in there. I'm just going to fill this guy up. Super cute. I think this, is, this would be such a fun one to add to any little baby gift you're doing because it's really... Very cute, very, uh, very straightforward. I really like how it it translates into the uh, the cuddle fabric. If you look at the pattern when you when you get it, you'll see the cover is actually in cotton, which is adorable. But I really the cuddle just is so much better. <laughs> I might be I might be a little biased. Here, here at this show, we're totally okay with uh, adults sleeping with stuffed animals, right? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was totally just going to say this This yeah. guy is, is coming to bed tonight. Check. Like, I'll be like, look, I'm five again. It totally is just <laughs> like my teddy bear. And it's funny because, um, yeah, I posted on Instagram at near Christmas time. I ended up getting a pillow back from my aunt that my grandmother had made me when I was five. And it reminded me of this teddy bear. And I wondered, like... Oh, 
she had my pillow. Like, where is my teddy bear? I don't know whatever happened to that thing, but I really do wish I still had it. I have pictures of me with it. So I guess there's that. And now I have. You could have an ATV. That's right. <laughs> but now I have this guy. And with this, uh, with the polyfill, the royal silk filling here, you can actually totally wash this. I would just throw him in a pillowcase and then toss him in the wash. And he should be totally fine because we've stitched everything down. The buttons on his eyes are nice and tight. Like, it'll be totally fine to be in the wash. I just like to throw those things in a pillowcase just to keep him from getting too beat up. Now get some down on his legs. And then this is really where you get to decide on how flat or how puffy you want him to be. He's not meant to be round obviously he's he's you know because he's just the front and the back so he's not super 3d but you could make him a little fluffier or a little flatter the royal silk does very well with being at different levels of stuffed and still working really nicely i like it in that regard and that it's very flexible in that all right get a little bit up into his neck so that that body stays all right, a little bit more, and then we'll stitch him up. All right, look at that. Oh no, where's my needle? I didn't put my needle back. Oh, we're in trouble. We may not stitch him shut. <laughs> Why do I do that to myself? There it is. Oh, whew. You saw it as soon as I saw it. Good, okay, so now I'm gonna sew his side shut. I'm just gonna use some thread here. And I'm going to double it up because I want it to be stronger. We've talked about this a few times. We didn't talk about I Love Cuddle yet. But we've talked about this sewing animals shut on the I Love Cuddle group. And if you haven't joined us there, I totally recommend it. It's a great Facebook group of people who love sewing with cuddle fabric. And people sew all sorts of things. And we get to talk about all of our questions and show off our makes. Which is awesome. But one of the things that we've talked about is how to sew these shut. Um, I'm going to stuff a little bit more in here. So one of the things, as you can see, is that because I did those little L bracket things, this just turns in really nicely. Okay, so this is all turned in, and it's going to sew shut there. I'm actually going to stick a little pin in here so I can sort of see that edge, and I'm going to let it turn in. And I'm going to try to find the end of it. So I've just sort of pushed the needle down to the end of the gap here, and then I'm just going to shove it up through here so that it kind of comes in, if I can get it to go into the right place. I want it to come up through the seam allowance. There we go. All right. I wanted to get caught on my needle. All right, so now this is really a lot of blind sewing. Especially with a camera in your face. Especially with a camera in your face, exactly. <laughs> so for you guys to get the best view, I just have to lean out of the way. Hey, so I'm just gonna kinda come in here and I'm gonna grab the other side. I can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm feeling it. Just trying to grab some of the, some of the fabric. I can feel when I've grabbed the backing. And I'm gonna take some sort of bigger it's a ladder stitch that I'm doing. So I go in one side, take a stitch, go straight across-ish, and grab another stitch from the other side. And I'm just trying to grab right inside that fold is what I'm doing. Because it's so fluffy, it's totally fine that you're not doing it perfectly. This is not needle turn. Okay, so we're just gonna get it as good as possible. What people have found is, one, if they use one thing of thread, it'll totally break. The other thing is that if you use two threads, then you, you do it and then you can come back and stitch it again. And I'm gonna give this a good tug before I go back. Stitch it again down this side and that'll give it a little bit of extra strength because this is the one weak point that you have in the whole making since the rest is stitched very tight by machine. Okay, so I'm gonna go up and down that. I've got a little bit more. You can feel it in there because it feels a little different, even if it doesn't look too terribly different. Okay, and I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna pull it through, do a little knot. Do 
a little knot. Okay, and then I stick it in here somewhere and stab it out elsewhere. And then it hides your thread in, oops, in the body. Okay. All right. So let me give them a little mushy mush here. How's that? It's great. Okay. He's so cute. Look at him. He's adorbs. Take my reading glasses off. I so, love it. He's super cute. I'm very happy with him. Okay. So there we go. Super cute. Super easy. Um, again, it's the Buddy Bear from Melly and Me. You can find the pattern with a discount code on our blog. So make sure you go to blog.shannonfabrics.com. You can find that. You can find more information on the stitches and the fabrics and all that sort of stuff. Um, the winner that we have for today is Kelly J. So congratulations. Please send us a private message and giving us your mailing address and all of that good stuff so we can send a kit out to you and you can make yourself a cuddle quilt kit. And we'll be back next week. Oh, let me show you what we're making next week. Hold up, hold up, come back. Oh, okay. To oh. Out what was oh, causing the, yeah, the weird light. A little, a little glare. When I'm just gonna hold this guy while oh. I'm doing this, okay? Um, <laughs> so next week we're back with, that is next week, right? I'm looking at the calendar. Yeah. Sheesh, already this year, I'm like, what? We're in February already? Um, so soon, it's gonna be February. And in February, we're doing, the first week we're doing this called the Soft and Cozy Cuddle Sack, which this is the child size version, which will go, almost with this. So it ends up being like basically a wearable blanket. And so I'm really excited to do this. We have it in all sorts of sizes. I'm going to show you some more examples next week and we'll show you how to make this. It's great for all of those times that these days we spend a lot of time online or we're sitting and a lot of us live, not me, but a lot of you guys live in colder areas where it's, you know, you need to sit and stay warm and all that good stuff. And that's what this little lovely kind of wearable blanket is so the soft and cozy cuddle sack and that's what we're going to make next week and uh yeah and then after that you can wear it every week while we're doing these unless you're sewing so um I was there a question sharks okay because, the sharks are because, great yeah. let me see is that the is the mouth oh it's going this way so let's try to get it directional for you super yeah, great i think it's called open wide is this fabric it's really great you can find information on it so every week we try to tell you the week before what we're going to be making for the next week and you can find it if you subscribe to our blog you'll get that inside information earlier and you'll also be able to find out what fabrics we're using where to get the pattern all of that um a few days early and then you could actually sew along with me which would be awesome i would love that so thank you so much for joining us me and Teddy say happy sewing. Thanks. Bye.